Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey yo! Well, here's the final segment in this video series. And I actually might do one more later and just do a deep dive into the schematic and the design and how this amp all works. But let's finish up this build series. I've tried to do this one as detailed as possible and really show you how to do wire for wire but all we got left is to install the optional volume control and the RCA jacks which sometimes I put them on the side sometimes I put them in the back there is an option that I've been doing on some of them where I put this little rocker switch here that you can switch between two different RCA jacks and then like this one's got four RCA jacks in the back like this which is you know one way of doing it I've done them with two RCA jacks here for like a streamer and then two in the side for people that like that look to use with you know the photo stage that might sit right next to it but some people want them all in the back and I can do that too and or you can too you know whoever's building this so there's definitely options on doing the inputs I mean, God, if you really wanted to, you could put a rotary switch here or in the front or the middle and have, you know, I, you, you know, you do whatever you want. I mean, I would try to keep the signal path over here away from the power AC. That's one reason I'm not super concerned about putting these in the back over here in this corner because it is like away from where these power things are, the noise and the AC and all that. So that's good still like them in the side the best if you're going for the lowest noise and the shortest signal path put them right here i do give people the option too if you want to put some people like them in the top you can put them right here put a pair of them like that or put them up here in the front where the switch is there's you know options for doing all this stuff and that's the cool thing with diy and these especially built to order kind of things too that i'm doing is you can get them done however you want and like this is gold trim silver trim Think they both look good you know it's just a matter of personal choice and so anyway let's go ahead and get this build finished let me show you what we've done since the last video first thing is we've installed the coupling caps and if you remember this is the grid of the output tube that has the grid leak resistor underneath here and then this is our grid stopper that goes over to the grid of the output tube. So the coupling cap connects to this tag point. And then this is the plate of the driver tube. So coupling cap goes from here to there. It's got some PTFE tubing on it, which I'll link in the description. And then over here, same deal. Plate of the driver tube goes through the coupling cap up here to this point which is the grid of the output tube and you can see the grid leak resistor a little better on this one Let's see tilt it up a little bit and you can see that guy hiding up underneath there you can see these are straight in line with this upper tag point and this upper tag point and then the same thing down on this end just going from this upper hole in this tag point to the upper hole in this tag point over here as you can see on the other side of this cap so the next thing we did was we installed our shade feedback or plate to plate local feedback resistors it goes from the plate of the output tube right here over to this connection that's the plate of the driver tube and the same thing on this side going from the plate this blue wire on the upper tube it comes across and goes to the plate of the input tube that gives you a good shot of how these are like kind of arched up like this to go between those plates again we want to utilize the 3d space we have to keep things like these resistors away from other parts to 
help keep interference from happening. And again, here's our plate load resistor down here low. It's going to the same terminal. Again, this is coming across and going over to the plate of the driver tube like that. Then this one's coming over here to the plate of the driver tube. And there's the coupling cap and there's the feedback resistor. And then underneath there's the plate load resistor. Hopefully showing it the way I did in sections made this easier to comprehend. So let me show you how the input cables are hooked up to the driver tube. And I'm going to zoom in here as close as I can. So here's how the RCAs are connected to the input of the amplifier and the volume control. Now if you were going to build this as a power amp or an amp that's designed to be used as a amplifier with a preamp, you could just not wire in a volume control and run these shielded wires straight to the RCA jacks from these terminals on the input tube. And so the terminals we're going to be connecting to, this is the positive signal, which we're using the red wire, and then this is the ground or the negative signal. Now I'm using two conductor with a shield microphone type cables and so we're only connecting the shield at the amplifier grounding point and the negative side is tied to the ground shield and connected right here and then positives connected here and then same thing on this terminal this is our ground the white wire and the shield are connected here and then Here's the positive or input signal wire. So we come up here to the potentiometer and the signal is pulled off the wiper which is the center terminal here. And then the white is grounded to this end of the pot. And the same thing on the other channel. The white's connected there. We've got the hot connected to the wiper. And coming from the RCA jacks, this red wire is connected to this end of the pot. So it's going from here to ground. That's the input impedance of the amp, which is 100K. It's across this pot. And then we pull the signal off the wiper. That way we get a variable signal. It'll vary between completely connected to the hot signal or to ground at zero volume. And same thing on this end, we've got the red wire connected on this end. We have the white wire that stretches across and connects to the same white ground. And then these wires here, these are the shields that are tied together between the two sections. And then I've put some of that liquid electrical tape over them just to ensure they don't short out to this at some point and cause a problem. And the same thing on that side, there are the two shields tied together and again this will connect back to this ground point over here inside the amp and then here's what it looks like from the side and then the last thing we have is the connections to the RCA jacks themselves and you can see here this is the right channel we have the because red's always right the center is the signal wire which is the red and then the ground is soldered to the body of the jack itself. That's why I like these RCA jacks because you're actually soldering the ground signal to the body of the jack itself. And it's not under like a little tab or something that's, you know, dependent on the nut being tight to make a good connection. And then on the other channel, we have the positive there. And then the ground's soldered on there. I put a little heat shrink tubing on the end of it just to make sure that the shield doesn't actually touch something over here and be grounded on both ends because we only want the shield grounded over at the input of the amplifier. And that's the input signal wiring. So like I said in the last video when I said we're almost done, I literally meant we were almost done. This was pretty quick to wire this stuff up. And I'm ready to go put some tubes in this amp and go listen to it. And I think this is a great place to wrap up this video.
Well, I hope this build series has helped you guys that are interested in building one of these for yourselves see how to do it. And I've really dove down the thought process of if I want to do kits, and I'm just not going to do kits. I just feel like that the stress level for me being as small an organization that I am, because it's just me, and, and I'm building these things, and then trying to provide customer support that will inevitably come up when people try to do these things themselves is just going to be overwhelming. And while I am happy to help people with their DIY builds, and you guys that have built some of my stuff know that you know when you have problems and email me, I'm happy to try to spend however much time we need to get this thing working because I don't want to see you try to build one of these and it not work out. And so I'm not... Yeah, I'm not going to claim it's going to be endless, but, you know, I've gone above and beyond with quite a few people to help them get their builds done. But I feel like if I sell you a kit, there's no end to it. And, you know, a couple of people I've just had to just say, I don't I don't know what's going on. If you want to send it to me and pay me to fix it, I can do that. But I don't I don't know what you've got going on. And like I think I showed in another video or another Monday monologue. A guy sent his little 6BM8 amp that he tried to build to me, and, you know, he put a valiant effort into it. He just, yeah, it was just a little little above where his skills were at the time, and I was happy to rebuild it for him, but, you know, he paid me a couple hundred dollars to do it. And so, anyway, I just think kits are going to be a bad idea. I am toying with the idea of doing chassis fab work and sending people fabricated chassis and you know you can tell me if you're going to use you know ed core transformers or going to use iso tango or musical power supply i don't really have you know i don't have the stuff to do the thermionic labs ones they don't the ones they have don't fit this chassis and they kind of jump from 10 watts to 20 watts so i'm not sure they really have anything right now that would work with this but anyway you tell me what output transformers you're going to use and like, you know, hey, I want a volume control and I want the RCA jacks and I'll work you up an estimate on doing a chassis. They're not going to be cheap. And that's one of the things I've kind of struggled with too. People get the idea of, oh yeah, you can just get Hammond to drill all the holes for you, you know. I don't know if you guys have priced them doing all that work. It's not cheap. And the online fab companies that I've researched, most of them are charging like $10 a hole. And there's like 30 holes in this thing. That's $300 after they build the actual box. And so, you know, I don't think I'm not going to have to charge that kind of money, but they're probably going to be couple hundred bucks maybe two two hundred two fifty because it's a big part of the build time is fabricating these things and so let me know in the comments again i'd have to like sit down and figure out like how long i actually spend on each one of these even when i'm doing batches of them like adding another one into the queue what that's going to take time wise and and they're probably not going to be like a thousand percent perfect. And, you know, and I'm wondering if people want me to supply like these tube rings too. So you don't have to deal with sourcing those. And because that's kind of part of the look of this. And so anyway, I think that's something that we could potentially do. Because I feel like I see a lot of comments from people saying, the fabrication of the chassis what's getting in their way of being able to build this or something like this and so that's a possibility that I could do that kind of as a service and maybe even do some of the amps from the past like the 6BM8 or the 6LU8 I think it was you know the some of those other amps that I've done that I could do the fab work for that too I have sold a couple of the fabricated chassis for the phono stages to people and so yeah 
Again, l let me know in the comments what you think about that idea, if that's something that people would see some value in. And I mean, if that got too too crazy or too many people were wanting those, yeah, I'm going to have to kind of put a halt to that on too to be able to keep up with what I am doing. And I still want to do fresh content for the channel with some other builds and some other stuff that I want to do too. So anyway, enough blabbering. Let's, let's end up this video here. Hope you've enjoyed this. I'm really... This is a labor of love for me. I'm really having fun with this. I hope you have fun building one of these. And they just sound so fun. I mean, it's really got a unique sound. It gives you that tube amp warmth and goodness without being too clean, but without being too distorted either. It really, to me, hits the sweet spot, especially for folks that are needing, you know, you know one to four watt kind of range. I know they make more power than that, but I think that's kind of where their sweet spot is. And it gives you a little bit of headroom. And there's, you know, multiple transformers that sound good to this. And there's just endless tube rolling. There's so many output tubes that will run in this amp. And there's quite a few input tubes too. And so I, I think this is a winner project. So anyway, thanks for supporting my channel by watching these videos. Thanks to you folks that are Patreon supporters. Really appreciate that, as well as folks that give me donations when they build one of these. I mean, I've had some people give me, you know, fifty hundred dollar donations for putting all this information out there so they could build something this cool on a budget. And I really appreciate you folks that, you know, appreciate what I'm doing for the community. But Hey, you know, if you're tight on money, you can't. I'm not going to hold it against people that can't do that kind of thing. But if you can, this, trust me, it's super appreciated. As you know, or hopefully you know, the bomb and the schematic are up on my website. It's under a little different place. It's under the production, and it's like the DIY info on this amp, which is how I'm going to do the stuff that I'm building for sale is going to be in that column versus the DIY project one. So I'll put a link below directly to that. And again, thanks for supporting Skunky Designs. And until the next video, have a nice day.